So what you see here is uh, something we started about 15 years ago. And uh, this is the campus, which was all just gravel, like I said. Mm -hmm. And then I got uh, chickens and rabbits. So this fenced an area here, which is right off the school. I built a little barn. Right. And we, I raised rabbits and chickens uh, for the science classes. And then we got goats and horse and more gardens. So we built a barn. And you built the barn yeah, with students? With the students, yeah. Did you? Yeah. yeah, we'll have to see it. Uh, hi, Myrtle. Hi. Would you like to tell us what you're doing here? Okay, uh, we're the Feed and Freedom Growers on Manistique. And what we do here is grow food for uh, a community, our families, and market. Um, we have a youth, uh, a youth growing portion to the farm. We have our market portion of the farm and our community aspect is across the street. Um, we're here to fill in the gaps that have been missing. Um, this Detroit is considered a food desert and so um, you can go to your local grocery store and you won't find half the produce that we have in our garden. And so uh, with <laughs> as my if son says, if you can find a grocery store. We notice that a lot of people go to the corner stores, a lot of processed foods. Um, overall, in the food system, um, we, we're just trying to transform the way Detroiters, and basically my family, how we think about the food that we eat. And some murals. So this is, we're getting close to the boundary of Detroit and Gross Pump. You can see this is Detroit. What do I do? <laughs> Kind of multifaceted. Um, I actually run the cafe, me and my daughter. Um, over here on this side, this is actually the headquarters for Black Tie Collective. It's a collective of poets. Um, I'm the president of Black Tie. Um, we have so many programs. We have a, a program called Uplifting Young Men. Uh, it ranges from really zero all the way up to 19. We have a lot of teenagers and young men, which keys upstairs on the uh, microwave, baby. They come in and we um, we go over everything from conflict resolution, problem solving. We give them homework sometimes. We have physical exercise. We feed them every time they it's come. Been a, it's been a great. Uh, it's just been a really a great run. Huh? You know, it really has. It's been. Uh, Amazing to watch how, how men change their lives, but also all the people that have surrounded this program mm -hmm. and made it good. You know? mm -hmm. People that come in on Saturdays and help us to wrap cookies. And, uh, just the people that are just really supporting the men. Mm -hmm. It's just been, been incredible. Wow. So that's, yeah. That's one part I've got to mention, and that's a big part of it. Yeah. That's our volunteer group, okay? Uh -huh. uh, without them. We got in trouble. Well, we'd be in a lot of trouble, yeah. yeah. Right, right. So there's a volunteer program? About that... 50 volunteers surround the program. Uh -huh. And they, they come in on Saturdays and during the week, yeah. and uh, they'll work the, the front or they'll work back here, wherever they're needed. Wow. What we wanted to do was to get everybody's attention and let them know we were here. Mm -hmm. So we decided to put the big window in. Because in this community, to have that kind of window is like unheard of. Who does that? But it, all the walk in traffic, it got their attention. Wow, look at that, look at that. So then once we knew they were watching, then they could watch the folks going back and forth and the work that was being done. So that was our way of getting that accomplished too.